Okay. Awesome. Thank you all so much um, for joining us for this virtual open house of USC School of Medicine in Greenville. Um, so my name is Jessica Sharp. I am the diversity coordinator um, for the School of Medicine as well as Greenville Health System. Um, and the rest of our students and faculty will introduce themselves. So my name is Jasmine Smith and I'm currently a second year medical student here. I'm Greg Ruth and I'm also a second year medical student. I'm T. Grace and I'm also a second year medical student. I'm Amanda Pigatowski, I'm the Manager of Admissions and Registration. I'm Lucy Connolly, and I'm the Admissions Coordinator. I'm Emily Murphy, and I'm the Student Success Coordinator. Great, so we're going to spend a little bit of time um, kind of opening up. The first thing that we'll talk about um, is our relationship to Greenville Health System. Um, like I mentioned to you all, um, I work um, at the School of Medicine as well as at GHS. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, we'll talk briefly about Greenville, um, and then we'll get right into the virtual open house. Um, and so we'll go ahead right now and switch over to the slides so that you can see the pictures of the school. And then we'll get started. Awesome. So um, the School of Medicine sits right next to Greenville Health System, um, which is really big benefit. But in addition to that, um, the resources are aligned um, with the school. And so um, anything that's at GHS is also um, a resource to you all. Um, and so the physicians that um, practice at GHS are a resource, as well as things like the library. Um, the diversity department is another example um, of a resource both at the school um, as well as at um, the hospital. And so when you come to school here, if you um, decided that you wanted to come here, um, you would frequently spend your time at the hospital as well as your third and fourth year. Um, and another space that you'll spend a lot of time is just the area of Greenville. Um, I've lived in Greenville for about 10 years, um, and I can tell you how wonderful it is. Um, it's a really great place to live um, and a great place to spend your time. Um, we really want to make sure that you aren't only a medical school student, but that you also have um, a life beyond just school. Um, and so here are just some pictures of Greenville. Um, so a picture at the top is on Main Street. Um, it's a really beautiful area. There's a lot of shops, a lot of restaurants, um, and so you can spend a lot of time on Main Street. Um, down at the bottom, you see another picture of another area of downtown, kind of off Main Street. Um, and again, there's just a lot of great things to do. Um, we have a peace center here that has a lot of different shows. Um, so there is pretty much never a weekend without something to do in Greenville. Um, and so you'll get to know the area a bit uh, when you come um, to visit or if you come to school here. So now um, Greg is going to start us off with some pictures of the school. So uh, the first one we'll look at is our lecture hall. So depending on um, the subject you're studying, you could be in there either every day of the week or maybe just once or twice a week. Um, it seats well over 100 people. Um, really interesting facts about the room. So if you look at and see those illuminated white spaces in front of the chairs, a lot of times what will happen is the teacher will give the lecture and then you'll be divided up into teams and you'll be presenting the case that you'll work through together. And those are dry erasable, so you can make your notes or diagrams or charts or whatever you want to write on those, which is very helpful. And also, if you look back at the big columns, kind of the right side of the screen, you'll see these two big television monitors. And those are um, basically just zoomed in views of whatever is being projected onto the big screen in the front. So if you're sitting in the back of the class, you can get a, still get a good up close view. Okay, uh, second picture is, again, a picture of the lecture hall. Um, one thing I'd like to point out here is if you kind of look in the far left side of the screen, you'll see these two um, kind of robot-looking things there. Um, those are actually cameras, and what those allow us to do is, particularly, particularly if we're doing like clinical skills or um, learning a surgical technique or whatever, we can basically have a teleconference with the surgeon or the physician over in the hospital and um, they will be doing the live procedure um, on a real patient. And we can talk to them, they can talk to us, we can see each other and communicate freely. Um, I don't know if you saw earlier, but there are little microphones on the desk in front of you in the lecture hall. So if you have a question, you can just put your finger on that, the camera will zoom in on you, and you'll have your microphone will be on. You can ask the surgeon questions, and they'll 
answer whatever you want, and they'll walk you through whatever they do. And then this next slide is our learning studio. And this is where we have a lot of our classes, especially our second year. Um, we'll also have, we call them lunch and learns for student interest groups that will come in um, frequently throughout the week, which is great for us because we get a free lunch out of it. Um, but also, since we get to hear a variety of different perspectives and different specialties within medicine. Um, so, for example, we could have a pediatric ophthalmologist come and speak, or we could have you know, an internist come talk to us. Um, but also, as you can see, there's a lot of different tables in the room, and they're all situated up in a round table setting. We, we also are divided up clinically into small groups. And so you'll get into a team of some other students that you'll be divided up to uh, with in your class. And we each are assigned a position that will work through a case. And so um, all the monitors that you can see, all the projections around the room, um, will all be the same case. Um, and what's also great, too, is that our school has so much technology. And so also all of the lectures are recorded. And so we can go back and, and learn and review what we've already gone over. Um, and like Greg said, we can communicate with other physicians over in the hospital. Um, as you'll see in a couple more slides, we can become really interactive with a lot of the imaging as well. Um, so it allows us to be both in a small group setting and also be in a large group setting as well. And then this next image um, is in an upstairs classroom at the school, and it's also in another round table setting. Um, it's a little bit different in that and that there will do a lot of our, um, so we're looking at cells, especially our first year in our histology class. And also we have access um, remotely into the um, like electronic medical records and even through MRIs and CTs and really cool things at the hospital. So we can actually, with a physician over here, work through a case. Um, also still in our um, small group setting. And like I said earlier about writing on the walls, pretty much can write anything anywhere at this school for the most part. Um, you can also, I'm also writing on the desk throughout class. Um, I call it kind of a playground of technology that we can do here. Um, so that's that image. And then the next one is one of our small group rooms, which is upstairs also on our third floor. And we'll meet there um, within our small groups, like I said before, that we get divided up into a team. Um, that allows us to work very closely with one another because um, we realize here that um, no longer the days that the physician just kind of captain of the ship. You know, we always have to work together with us with the other nurses or other colleagues with one another in order to help the patient. And so we'll work together in these rooms. Also, the same with the TV monitors, you can still pull up different images. Also, those walls right there. Um, you can write on, like I said, as well. Um, also, during test week, you'll see that those are covered from top to bottom, which I remember on my interview day was pretty daunting and intimidating, but now I'm kind of understanding the language a little bit more. Um, so those are also great places to study. The school's open 24-7 every single day of the year, so you're always bound to see people walking up and down halls. And then... This next image is kind of the meeting area between our school buildings, kind of shaped into an L. Um, and this is kind of the middle area. I also know that the same area is not only a meeting place when we're going in between classes, but also during test week, we also have puppy dog therapy sometimes, which I need to kind of use sometimes more, I guess. Um, and they'll kind of come through here. So this is kind of like the I don't know, center area between all the classrooms this year. So the next image would be a picture of one of the rooms on the second floor where we have our simulation center. And basically this, this area, these are just a playground technology, but it's really a great area for us as first and second year students to get, and even the third year students use it sometimes too, but you get a firsthand um, experience with patients, even though they're not real patients, they're mannequins, but they're very lifelike. Um, they, they make noises, they have them with blood, you can practice drawing um, IVs and getting blood from the mannequins. It's very real life, so you get a good experience and learn how to do those techniques before you actually have to do them on a real patient. And so this looks like one of the, maybe a simulation of the OR room. Um, we haven't really used that much yet where I'm at, but I'm pretty sure the third years come in and use um, this particular uh, mannequin room a lot. Um, the second picture is another picture of a simulation room, but just a different room that has more than one 
mannequin within them, and we'll talk about EMT later, but we did use them sometimes for EMT because they're, they have a mannequin that actually gives birth to a baby and um, does other realistic things that you normally don't get to experience as a first year student. Um, so these are one of the rooms that have the different mannequins, and right here shows the window where they watch you and they control um, the mannequin's breathing and everything like that to make it realistic for you as you're practicing with the mannequins. Um, yeah, so this next picture will be an inside look at one of those rooms that Tyson was talking about. Um, so you'll see the mannequin laying down on the bed and the monitor above his head um, will actually display the vital signs and the uh, EKG tracings. <laughs> and basically all the things you have on the monitor at the, uh, at the hospital. And those are controlled by um, your teacher who is sitting in the, um, the, across the other side of the one way mirror. And they can control their vital signs and make things go wrong to kind of make you think on your feet a little bit as they go the exercise. We also do a lot of practice on these mannequins um, in terms of our clinical skills, so like IV and blood drawing and suturing. And uh, we do a lot of EMT training there so we can practice putting splints on their arms or inserting artificial breathing tubes, things of that nature. Um, and again, there's actually a separate room where they have a, uh, a mannequin that will actually um, give birth and you can practice delivering babies, which is not something I plan to make a career out of, but it's pretty cool. And it's good to get that practice. Um, the next picture is uh, a simulated clinical exam room. And these are set up exactly the way that the rooms um, they store in the hospital are. So um, about once or twice a week, the school will bring in uh, standardized patients who are actors, who have a script, and they have a real set of symptoms and um, things that they're supposed to say to kind of test how you reason your way through the case. And what that allows you to do is do a lot of practice taking your uh, patient histories and doing physicals there, and will allow you to get a lot of practice before you go next door to the hospital and do these things on real patients. And one of the great things about our uh, curriculum, the way it's set up, is um, so the first two years of medical school are pretty heavy classroom based, and it's easy to kind of get lost in the books and forget that you're really trained to be a doctor. And the benefit of having a facility like this is we can get a lot of uh, hands on clinical experience and practice applying what we learn in the classroom to real patients in the clinical setting, which is what it's all about. Now, this next image is a picture of our library, and I think we have one of the greatest libraries in the country, just because it's very, it's very different, because I remember at the school I went to before medical school, it was a very large library with you know, thousands of books, and here it looks a little different because you can't really see many books. There are some books that you can check out, we have all the books that you need for your classes if you do need that book down on the, on the bookshelf down on the left. However, these um, these little rooms here to the left are the offices of our librarians, and they're there all the time. And these are some study spaces. There's study spaces throughout the entire school, but they're so willing to help you with anything. Um, I know there's been times where I've needed to get a certain article for a specific research project or something with school, and I'll go tell one of the librarians, and within you know, 10 to 15 minutes, they have access to anything, everything I need with the full list. Um, and they're so helpful, and this is what they look for. And they're so helpful to the medical students and they really value um, our knowledge and us trying to learn. So. And now we are looking at the, um, on the lower floor is the outside of the Office of Admissions. And this is Amanda again from Admissions. And Lucy and I are here at the School of Medicine ready to talk to anybody about applying to medical school, um, counseling services for getting your application ready. Um, some tips that we generally like to give out in terms of preparing your application. Um, there are seven things that the admissions committee looks at. We use a holistic review process, and um, the first two things are pretty obvious: GPA and NCAT. NCAT is the standard, the standardized medical college admission test. Um, so, having a strong GPA and a strong NCAT is important. But the committee will also look very closely at your letters of recommendation. Um, they'll be looking at those to ensure that you've, you've got letters from people who know you well 
and that kind of represent your different activities and strengths. So having letters from science professors would be good. If you've done a, a lot of clinical experience with one person, it'd be good to get a letter from them. But just make sure you've got letters from people who know you well and that they're able to write you a strong letter of recommendation. Um, they're going to look at extracurricular activities, and that would be anything that's not studying and not um, shadowing or clinical observations. So being in a Greek organization, doing sports, church work, volunteering in the community, um, presidents of clubs, anything that you do that's not studying and not medicine. Um, for a lot of people, this will be having a job. And that, um, you know, the committee understands that many people do have to work throughout college, and that's perfectly fine. Um, the extracurricular activities will show the committee that you have good time management and organizational skills, and that you have some other interests besides medicine. So um, they're looking for kind of well-rounded people. Um, your personal statement, which also kind of encompasses your gender, your entire application, your story, your distance traveled, um, whatever is, is makes you who you are and um, how you got to the point where you are applying for medical school. So, um, you know, just think a lot about yourself and what's driving you and, and be sure and, and let that be reflected in your application. Our admissions committee does does seek diversity in all of its applicants, and that's not just gender, ethnicity, and race. That would be any experiences that you had, anything that you can bring to the table that that will help enhance the value of the um, learning environment. Clinical experiences are definitely required, especially for our school. Our students do get in front of patients right away, so we expect you to have have some experience working with patients and working in a hospital or doctor's office environment. So, um, so we do require that you do that. We don't have a certain minimum number of hours, but just make sure whatever you're doing is meaningful and that you can talk about it in an interview setting. Which takes us to number seven, the interview. Um, that is really just about getting to know you, um, why you want to be a physician, we want you to demonstrate your communication skills. So coming in for an interview will we'll let the committee kind of see who you are beyond just what's on the paper. Um, if you have questions or want to get in contact with any, any of us, our contact information is on the screen. So feel free to let us know um, any way we can help. And I just wanted to jump in and reiterate the fact that Amanda and everybody in the front office is so great. Because I remember that, um, I remember Greenville um, was my first interview and I was very nervous. But I remember walking in here and kind of feeling like I kind of felt it done with the end of the day. And uh, I remember interviewing with two of the physicians that I spoke with. Um, you know, it just, it just spoke so well and I felt like um, everything was so welcoming um, for me. and. I don't know. I just I just remember walking out of here. I didn't want to tell anybody. I'm afraid that you know that I did not get in, but fortunately I did. Um, that I really wanted to come to school here. And I think you feel that when you just walk on. Um, and so this next image, and to go off and see, I agree. I think we all agree. You had a great interview experience here. Felt great. Um, this next image is uh, one of the things that stood out to me when I came to the school was the, the EMT program. And so this is an image of what they call the mass, uh, mass casualty event that we have towards the end of the EMT program. You uh, participate in this mass casualty experience, and it basically is what it sounds like. There's this giant mass casualty, and everyone is working together to triage the patient to figure out um, who needs to immediately go to the hospital you can take care of here. So um, the course is, I think there's only one other medical school in the country that does this, but it's a really great experience. It gets you um, involved with patients. 
um, firsthand as soon as you come to school, it's one of the first things you do. And with the, um, just to let you know, with the mass casualty, it's not real, it's all simulated. So they let everyone know, the news knows, all the surrounding areas know that there are going to be some explosions, maybe some sounds, some gunshots, but they're all simulated and everyone around knows, everyone's aware. Um, so no one freaks out or anything. Um, but EMT is great. You see patients from their home, which you usually don't get the opportunity to do as a doctor. So you can see where they're coming from. You can kind of understand more of their story and why they're not able to come to appointments on time or why they have certain conditions. You can see how they're living. Um, and that's a really rewarding experience once you move um, into the hospital. You think about that more um, through the EMT experience. Um, the next picture is um, a simulated car accident. You see that they have patients inside the car. And these are students um, dressed up um, that got the firefighters helping out. Um, and also law enforcement and the fire department are also here, and they help out during the simulation. So this is just how realistic it looks. That's why we have to let people know that it's not real. Um, but it's a really cool experience. You learn a lot. Your adrenaline's high. And it's, you, you learn a great deal just from that one experience. Um, in the next picture, um, going along the social side of what we do at the school to keep each other um, connected is this is a picture of the potluck that we do um, around Thanksgiving and everyone brings everyone signs up to bring a certain dish and then um, we have it laid out in this nice display everyone can come eat um, enjoy themselves relax um, usually hopefully pests are kind of done so everyone's kind of winding down getting ready for the holiday break um, just a really fun time for all the classes to come together because we usually don't see each other too much because we're all always busy studying, so it's always fun when we can come together um, with the faculty as well and just enjoy each other's time. This was a picture of us on Therapy Dog Day, and I like it so much that I now have a puppy living with me. So um, it's they'll, they'll come in once every few weeks or so, um, especially around pet suites, and this gives us a chance to template with the dogs and de stress a little bit. But um, like we kind of touched on earlier, the people in uh, student affairs, all the faculty and staff really kind of go out of their way to be sure that um, that we're managing our stress well. And they really um, take their time to be sure that, um, that you're doing well in your personal life also. So they um, go out of their way to make sure that everything's going okay and that you are um, kind of handling your stress well and that, um, you know, you, not just the student, you, you as a whole person are being taken care of. Yeah, and then um, also just to go along with that, I, I just remember several times on a Friday afternoon studying um, like a medical student, and there'll be professors that will walk by our study room just to check and see if we're all right. We just talk about what we're doing that weekend or during football season for the watch the football game that night. But they really do, the professors here really do care a lot about you. You're just not another student and not another member, um, which I think means a uh, Heck of a lot of those. And so this picture right here is at the YMCA, um, which is not too far away from the hospital where we're at. Um, as a medical student, you have a path both to the YMCA and to the Greenville Health System Life Center, which you'll see in the next image. Um, but this is just in the intramural soccer game. This is the first year, playing the second year class, and I think uh, us three here um, will not be shy saying that we won both years. We won our first year against the now third years and beat the first years again. Um, we have a lot of athletic people like Greg over here. I don't feel, I unfortunately not participate in soccer. I'm not that great. But I do play and pick up basketball. We, uh, we have a bunch of people in our class that go play basketball um, on Saturdays. And I don't know, we always kind of joke around here too that exercise is medicine. Basically, exercise makes everything better. Um, because it really does, we've integrated lifestyle, medicine, exercise, and nutrition into our curriculum. Um, and so we really try to promote uh, wellness and the you know, kind of whole aspect of health, whether that's just the, you know, the emotional side, the stress side, the physical side, and everything. And this is a picture of the life sentences where um, I try to grab a workout a couple times a week when I manage to get over there. Um, it's a great it's a great area to go de-stress and to get out. We also have a bunch of classes for us. Um, there's an indoor track and a swimming pool. And this just kind of show that the school has a bunch of options um, for us to get out and be healthy. 
Hey, so this next image is a picture of a um, couple of the members of SMA, uh, which stands for the Student National Medical Association. It's a nationally recognized organization, and the goal of it is to promote um, the retention of minority students in medical school and also increase the number of minority students actually applying to and getting into medical school. Um, and this is from one of the events that we do it's called the Minority Health Summit that's um, put on by the Regional Health System. We uh, go out and we volunteer this particular um, year, which was last year, we did um, blood pressure measurements and we did uh, waist circumference measurements on the different, on the different who wanted to, they could volunteer to get those checked. Um, this was, this is Leila Ali, if you didn't know, um, she was the, the speaker, the keynote speaker for the event last year. Um, and it's really just a good time to get out in another opportunity to get involved with the, um, with the uh, environment, with the people in the environment around the hospital. Um, the same with EMT, you see the same people that live around here. Um, gives you a chance to show your face as a student and let them know that you're at the hospital, you're working with them more than likely as a student, and so it's a good way to um, introduce yourself and let them see that you're out there and you're concerned about their health. So this next slide is a picture from one of the events that Student Affairs put on. It's called How Far Can You Stretch a Chicken? Um, and it's just a fun event that we put on, so students kind of have um, the opportunity to think about budgeting and managing their healthy lifestyle for food. Um, this event here was how how much chicken could use for the lowest price. I think it was like dollar thirty that one. Um, then the next in the next slide, there's also a picture of Garden Club which is another organization we have, so students have time to get outside the study room and outside the classroom. Um, it's an organization that the students put together, but faculty got really behind it, and we'll have fresh vegetables throughout the year, um, probably not winter, but for the most part, um, you can just go up and grab it. But as far as student affairs is concerned, um, our office is comprised of a couple of people. So Dr. Jim Buggy is the Associate Dean of Student Affairs and Admissions. Uh, Maggie Wensky is the Manager of Student Affairs. Myself, Emily Northy again, is the Student Success Coordinator. And we also have Casey Wiley, who is our own financial aid person and registrar. The main goal of the Student Affairs Office is to be the home base for students. We take care of all of your needs outside the classroom. Um, we want to be your support system. We want to be your advocate. We want to help in any way that we can. Um, we also put on all the events. Things that you're familiar with would be orientation and graduation. Um, and then we also have other fun events in the meantime um, that you'll want to get involved with. We support the tutoring program, so if you have any needs, we're able to help, um, you know, be it through test-taking strategy, time management, how you're studying. Um, coming to medical school is a lot different than being an undergrad, and a lot of people compare it to trying to drink from a fire hose. Um, and that's very true, but we're going to help you be successful so you can make it to graduation. Um, that's our overall goal. And the advising piece is that throughout each year, you'll be getting asked a couple of different questions to kind of mold you and help take you in the direction of which specialty you want to end up in. Um, we have academic coaches and career coaches. Student affairs can also meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, colleges is a new program that we've implemented for this year, kind of compared to Hogwarts houses. Uh, but it's a really fun way for students in the first year through fourth year to kind of create relationships and um, have a mentoring rapport built. Um, it's led by clinical faculty and it's supported by biomedical sciences faculty. Um, and there's a lot of really fun events. We're going to have a college cup at the end of the year where everyone can participate. Uh, kind of talked about events already a little bit. But for student organizations and clubs, it's really easy to get something started if we don't already have it. But we do have a lot um, as far as specialty interest groups such as uh, med peds or OB, wilderness medicine. Um, and then we have a lot of other organizations and committees like Community Outreach and Wellness Committee. Um, and then we also have fun random clubs like Donut Club that just got started. Um, so pretty much any interest you have, we can help support that. Um, we're the liaison. Student Affairs is the liaison between the students and faculty or students and staff. Um, so we're there if maybe there's something that you'd like to see changed or done differently. We're that first sounding board for you. Um, and again, we just want to be that home base. 
So uh, this is Jackie here again, um, and like I mentioned, I'm the diversity coordinator um, for both Greenville Health System as well as the school. Um, and as Amanda mentioned, diversity um, is important in our class, so we look at more than just um, race, gender, um, and ethnicity. We look at all kinds of things, um, and we really work to make sure that diversity um, education is something that we focus on. So um, our curriculum has been carefully designed to prepare our students to work um, effectively on both an individual level and a system level with patients um, from every socioeconomic status, cultural background, belief system, and life experience. Um, and so our chief diversity officer, who's also part of this department, um, works hard to make sure that we have some edu educational sessions weaved um, throughout the curriculum. Some of those things are social determinants of health. Um, Jasmine quickly mentioned um, when you do your EMT service through your first few years, uh, you get a better idea of your patients and where they come from. And this class will help you figure out what are some of the things that are affecting their health and their health care. Um, we focus on health disparities um, and how those affect certain groups cultural confidence and cross-cultural communication and negotiation. Um, we really like to make sure that we prepare our physicians to have conversations with people from different cultures um, because regardless of what culture you're from, you will absolutely have patients um, who are different than you. LGBT patient-centered care, which is lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender patient-centered care, um, that's also a priority for us. Um, in addition to that, we teach a class on unconscious bias, um, and so we all kind of have some biases that we are unaware of, and so we like to um, make sure that we teach our students about those biases so that they can be aware of them um, and make sure that that is not affecting um, their patient care. And so um, you'll see if you interview, if you become a student here, that um, curriculum, that diversity really is um, a priority for us, both from an admission standpoint as well as a curriculum standpoint. So now we're going to transition um, to a few questions. Um, if you have some questions, feel free to type them in the box. You have a Gmail account. Um, if you don't, you can send us an email with your question. Um, and that email is um, jsharp, S-H-A-R-P, um, at ghs.org. So, So um, the first question we'll ask, um, and we will go ahead and ask all three students this, and they can each kind of weigh in on their perspective. Um, but how do you all balance studying with your personal lives, um, if you do have some sort of personal life outside of study? Um, and we can start with Jasmine since you're on that side. Um, so last year, um, my first year, I don't think I balanced it well. I just think I had too much of a personal life last year. Um, <laughs> so this, this year, what I've done, I try to give myself at least one day a week where I'm just kind of doing something that I want to do if that's just sitting, usually that's just sitting watching Netflix, honestly, that's what makes me happy nowadays. So I, I just take one day, because you need at least one day, I think, a week to really relax and just get your mind right, because you're studying a lot and that can really drain you. So I definitely recommend still doing things that you like, but you'll, you'll definitely have to cut back if you want to be in medical school. Yeah, I, uh, I like to work out and play sports. Um, that's always been my source of stress relief, so that's what I usually do the most. Um, I also kind of make the point to um, try to make it downtown or like somewhere in Greenville that I haven't been before um, every week usually. And there's so many places around here. So like downtown is awesome. Like there are a ton of good restaurants to eat at, if you like food like me. Um, and there's also like a bunch of mountains, obviously, and a lot of outdoor activities around Greenville. So I try to make a point to um, to take advantage of those at least once or once a week, once every other week, and uh, it's kind of get away from it for a little bit and relax. Yeah, and also I'm kind of the same way. I think um, I guess over the course of medical school, I've had to find times where I just dedicate that time and I can't do anything uh, that does involve schoolwork or studying. And so, for example, like on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I try to say that. From 5.30 to 6.30, I can't do anything but go run or get out of here for a little bit. Or I'll try to spend, um, I'll say I'll take Friday night off and Saturday night off, and I can't look at the book. Because um, other than that, I think you can easily get wrapped up and trying to feel like you know everything. I think you quickly realize, maybe this is just me personally, that it's impossible to know everything. Because um, especially with the way that the amount of knowledge and medicine is going, it's just like a, a straight curve upward. Is I think 
Um, we're going to try to move as much as we can, but to also be able to have a conversation with people and work with patients for the day. Um, because I think there's going to be very few people out there that know absolutely everything about what's going on. Because there's so much research and stuff. So I think um, I think we owe it to ourselves and to our friends and family that's needed not in medicine. Because sometimes it's really hard to understand like what people are going through. Because um, it really seems because uh, I'll be studying on a Friday or Saturday night, and I'll have friends and family that want to go out and do things. But you know, you have to make sacrifices, but you also can find time. So it's not it's not constantly. All the time, of course, every year. Yeah, plus the better you take care of yourself, I kind of found the better you do in school too. It makes studying that much more not only enjoyable but effective too. And um, don't get to call your parents too, they appreciate it. Um, in terms of you all currently in school, um, what, and I know you all are second years, but what does a typical day look like for you all now as well as kind of last year when you were first year? Um, honestly, okay, so. First year, when you come, you're going to go to every class and you're going to feel obligated to be there all day. You're going to always be at school. You're going to be hardcore studying. This year, I think you learn um, more efficient ways to study. And I won't say you won't be at school as much, but you'll have a, you'll have a better plan of how to effectively study things to make sure that you're retaining the information and not just kind of wasting time reading all of the different books and resources that you have. Um, so this year, big difference is um, I usually, I just have more time. I, I found a way to carve in more time to, like you said, work out and, and do things that I need to do, clean my apartment, um, sleep. Uh, you, you adapt and you learn. I think first year you're kind of trying to, you're seeing that college studying isn't going to work and you have to kind of fix it and amp it up. And I don't think you ever really fix it, or I didn't fix it until this year. Um, but I think the difference is first year you're coming in, you're in that school, you're nervous, you want to do really well. So you're kind of kind of draining yourself, just studying hard and the classes with our schedule, the classes are, you know, you're there longer each day. But second year, um, our schedule's changed to where we're done by noon with our classes. So we have the rest of the day to kind of digest everything we've learned and also work out and do the other things that we need to do for life. Yeah, first year is really kind of all about finding your Putting here basically and finding study techniques and kind of ways to go about things will work for you, like Jasmine said. So, my schedule last year would be a little bit more variable because our class schedule kind of, we would be in class until two or three in the afternoon, and then I, uh, I didn't really get into like a set routine until probably later in the spring. Um, this year is a little bit different. Um, so, first year, it's a little bit, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough, but it's a little bit lighter on the class material and the knowledge volume, I guess. Um, second year is a little bit more intense because you have a lot more um, a lot more material to cover, and you also have your uh, first four exam coming up at the end of the year. Um, so usually what my day looks like now is I'll wake up probably around a little before six and go to the Y and run or do something just to get woken up and relieve stress before it begins. Um, and then I like to go to class. Um, I don't know if it's a compulsive habit, but I just like to be there anyway. Um, so we'll be in class from 8 until noon um, on Tuesday through Friday. Um, so we have all afternoon off to study or to work on something else if you want to. So I'll usually try to stay at school and then study until about 7 or 7.30 or so. And then I'll go home and I'm usually done after that. Like I, I don't like studying once I go home. Um, so I'll go home, make dinner, um, relax. I love watching Always Sunny in Philadelphia. It's a great show. And it's a good stress reliever. Um, and probably try to go to bed pretty early and do all again next day. Yeah, uh, I'm doing. I cannot wake up at six. I usually wake up at like seven thirty, and I'm mad that I have to get up. <laughs> um, uh, I think um, I'm usually kind of like an adult too. I'll usually study till like one or two in the morning, but I like that. Um, because I can't text anybody or get on Facebook because nothing's going on. Like, I can't even watch TV. Well, I got we just me and my two roommates are also noticed since we just got rid of cable because um, it's too expensive. So we watch a lot of Netflix. But um, so I think um, just kind of reiterating kind of what they're saying too that um, there's just so much out there. And I think what's really difficult and it's kind of frustrating at first um, is that you come to an environment where you might have been kind of like the top dog at your own campus, but you get into medical school and then you realize that 
everybody's the top dogs of their species, and that everybody's very intelligent, um, and that I am no longer what I thought was pretty intelligent. I feel pretty not intelligent. Um, that, that's just to say that I think people are, you, you have to get into your own schedule and do your own thing and not worry about what other people are doing. Because I think um, what works for you works for you. It might not work for Greg. So Greg's schedule probably doesn't work for me at all, but what I do doesn't work for Greg and Jasmine. Um, and there's so many resources out there that you just have to kind of get down to a couple of things that you really study um, and really get to know. Like I love um, reviewing the lectures because, like I said earlier, that all the lectures are recorded. Um, and so I like to listen back to the lectures because sometimes going to class, some classes stress me out because I feel like I'm not getting all the information. But when the classes are recorded, I can stop and pause and go back and study it and kind of go through it at my own pace. So I think it really just depends on the student. And then I think um, the professors here in the school does a really good job of making sure that you personally do well because everybody's very different. Great, so we'll have one more question. Uh, what's the best way to prepare for the MCAT? Um, are there any great resources or tactics that you recommend? Um, I don't really have great advice, honestly, for the MCAT. I didn't, um, I didn't study how they usually recommend to study. Um, I studied hardcore for maybe a couple of months. Um, I really don't have great advice for this. I, I did not like the MCAT. I just wanted to take it and be done with it. Um, I will say I know um, friends that made. I guess I guess my name say you don't have to spend a lot of money like in a program. If that works for you, then great. But I, I know a lot of people that if you if you need that discipline, or I guess if you need someone to tell you when and what to study, then it's great for you. But um, if you don't want to spend that money, if you don't have that money, I I know many people that have studied for it on their own, just getting, um, looking at different schedules online that you can follow um, and just making yourself study it because you want to do well and because you want to get into medical school. So don't feel pressured to do a program just because all your friends are doing a program unless you really want to do a program. Yeah, I know a lot of people use the Kaplan and the Princeton Review uh, course preparation things. Um, I think the main benefit of those is kind of giving you a schedule to stick by. Um, you can go out and buy the books and not buy the course. That's what I did. So I, just, I bought the Kaplan books and I found their uh, course schedule online and I just followed along with it without ever um, you know, going to class or paying them how much money it is to take a class. Um, the biggest, I think the best thing that you can do if you really take a lot of as many practice tests as you can and try to set it up in like a very realistic environment like you're actually taking the test in. Like, so take your phone away, like, done anything else in the room with you, like just use the computer and take the test like you take the real thing. Because that way, once you get into the uh, the real test environment, it kind of reduces your anxiety a fair amount because you've done it so many times before. And after a while, like you do so many questions, you kind of you can easily get into the rhythm of the test and you can also kind of learn to pick out different things that you know they're gonna ask about. And um, once you've seen those literally hundreds or thousands of times, it becomes a lot easier to um, manage the test itself. And it also kind of makes your book study more effective because if you like go through this, you see that picture, you think, oh yeah, like I remember that question that I did some last test about this, so I'll spend a little bit more time looking at this. And um, so if I could do it again, that's how I would go about doing things. Yeah, and I guess I would just like to say first off, it's not just about your MCAT, so don't freak out and spend all your time studying um, just for the MCAT. But granted, it is important. You need to do well, but don't make it like, you know, it's like the end of the world if you didn't do super well. Because for me, standardized tests were very difficult. I did much better in a classroom setting. Um, and the first time, um, like, and I took one of the exam review books, and like, I knew that book inside and out, and that's like all I did. And then I did a couple practice tests. Um, and then I took the MCAT the first time and didn't do very well at all. Um, I still remember getting the score back and like I teared up because I was so mad and so frustrated with myself. Um, and then I said, this is not going to happen again. So I completely changed the way I did it. And then uh, I bought these books called Exam Crackers. And they're like 999 questions. Um, and I did like 3,000 questions in about a two month period. And like all I did, like, I didn't look at the book again. All I did were questions and questions and questions. Um, so I think doing, and then my, my MCAT went up way up 
like dramatically. And so I think doing questions um, is very advantageous, but also I think it just depends on who you are. Um, but I think our, my biggest piece of advice is try to do as many questions and see the material as much as possible. Um, because when you get into the MCAT, it's not just going to be the information. It's going to be trying to do you know, whatever questions they ask you. Yeah, if you can, just to add to that, if you can, if you have like a two or three week time period before the test, just to clear your schedule and do nothing else but study for the MCAT, like it's your job. I would recommend that. Like, I know it's not possible for a lot of people, um, like you have a job especially. But for me, like I took a few weeks between when I graduated from college and when I started my job to just do nothing else to kind of study from the MCAT from like nine to five, like it was my job basically. And um, do a lot of practice questions and then I get it out three or four weeks later and that helped a lot. Wonderful. Thank you so much, guys. Um, if you have questions um, specific to admissions, you can email admissions at greenvillemed dot sc dot edu um, and you can also email me again that's jessica sharp and my email is j sharp s h a r p at ghs dot org